If you've ever tried to solve an equilibrium system for the concentrations of reactants and products at equilibrium, you probably remember that you need things like an ice table and the KEQ expression, and that you end up doing some pretty complicated algebra, including using the quadratic formula. Well, I'm James Wahlberg, and I'm here with some good news. And that is that often in solving these problems, you could make some assumptions and some simplifications that make the math quite a bit easier. Let me show you what I mean. The thing that makes solving ice tables for equilibrium concentrations so complicated is that it very often requires the use of the quadratic formula. And this makes the math very complicated. However, there is something called the 5% rule that can help you decide when or if you actually have to use this complicated quadratic process. And here are the parts of the 5% rule to keep in mind. The first is to look at the KEQ value. If the value of the KEQ is much less than one, then that's a pretty good indicator that you can get away with solving a simpler equation instead of the uh, quadratic form. However, there's still something else we have to check. So what you do is you go ahead and solve for x, solve for the equilibrium concentration, divide x by the initial concentration of that molecule, and then look for the answer to that calculation and see if that answer is less than or equal to 0.05 or 5%. If it is, then you're on safe ground by using the simplification. If it's not, however, then you have to go through and do the more complicated process of using the quadratic formula. So those are the two parts of this simplification to keep in mind. First, check the KEQ if it's very small compared to one. Then go ahead and solve with the simplification, but check your answer and see if it is uh, less than or equal to 0.05. If it's not, you have to go the hard way and uh, use the quadratic formula. This simplification technique relies on the fact that when the KEQ is very small, that means that the concentration of the reactants are much higher than the concentration of the products. Therefore, when you put the concentration of reactants and products from the ice table into the KEQ expression, that value of X is very small compared to the concentration of the reactant, so we're safe in ignoring it. But again, we have to check and make sure that we come up with a value of 0.05 just to make sure that we are safe in doing so. So let me take you through a quick couple of examples to show you how this works. First of all, if we have a system of acetic acid in which two moles are placed in 10 liters of water, and we want to calculate the equilibrium concentration of the acetate ion, given a Ka, which is essentially a KEQ, of 1.76 times 10 to the minus fifth, here's how we would use the simplification. So it's a safe bet to try to use the simplification because our Ka, our KEQ, is so much smaller than 1, 1.76 times 10 to the minus fifth. So let's go ahead and try it. Our initial concentration is 0.2 molar of acetic acid. We have a concentration of zero for the acetate and the hydronium ion to start. However much acetic acid dissociates, we'll call that x, therefore the change is minus x, and whatever dissociates shows up as acetate and hydronium, so we'll call those both x for the change. Then at equilibrium, the acetic acid is 0.2 minus x, and the acetate and the hydronium are both equal to x. So. Using our simplification technique, then, we're trying to solve for x, which will give us the acetate ion concentration. Here we have the Ka expression, and we will plug in these concentrations of products over reactants. In this case, that is x times x, or 0.2 minus x. And that all simplifies down to x squared over 0.2. So here we go we are ignoring the value of x in relation to the 0.2. We're assuming that the concentration of the products is much less than the concentration of the reactant. Therefore, we can assume that we can drop that value of x, and that allows us to avoid using a quadratic formula. Now, doing the algebra on the simplification then, 
rearrange, and we end up taking the square root. And if we do that, we find that x is 1.876 times 10 to the minus third. So the last step is to check our value for the equilibrium concentration, compare it to the starting concentration, and make sure that we are equal to or less than 5% of that starting concentration. So our 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3 is 0 0.00187. We divide that by the starting concentration of the reactant, 0.2. We get a value of 0 0.009, which is in fact less than 0 0.005, less than 5%. So here we are safe in using the approximation. In fact, if we had carried out the quadratic calculation, we would have received a value, an answer for x, of 1.875 times 10 to the minus 3. So our difference would have been in the third decimal place. So hardly matters at all in terms of the precision that we're working in here. And again, this comparing to the original concentration and seeing if it is less than 5% of that initial concentration bears out the fact that we are safe in making this assumption here. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we have phosphorus pentachloride, and it's undergoing a decomposition reaction to give us PCl3 and chlorine gas. We have a KEQ of 0 0.0211, so immediately we can start thinking that this system is a good candidate for trying our simplified calculation process. So what do we have? We have one mole of PCl5 in a four liter container. We wanna know the PCl3 concentration at equilibrium. So let's set up our ice table. And initially our PCL5 is 0.25 molar. We have no PCL3, nor do we have any chlorine gas. Whatever PCL5 decomposes will represent as minus X. And the stoichiometry shows us that for every mole of PCL5, we get one mole of Cl3, so we'll call that plus X, and one mole of chlorine gas, so we'll also call that plus X. Therefore, at equilibrium, the PCL5 is 0.25 minus X. The PCL3 is X, and the chlorine gas is also X. So to use our technique then, let's write the equilibrium expression here, which is concentration of products multiplied together, divided by concentration of reactant, then filling in from our ice table, it looks a bit like this. KEQ is 0.0211. X and X are both concentrations of the products, therefore that's X squared. And in the denominator for the concentration of our reactant, we will again make this simplification and assume that X is very small compared to 0.25. So we'll just say 0.25. Therefore, we go ahead and solve for the value of X. We find that it is 0.07. Our last check then is to compare this value of 0.07 to our initial starting concentration. However, when we do that, we see that the 0.07 molar concentration of the products is more than 5% of the concentration of the reactants at the beginning. Therefore, here we cannot use the simplification process, and we must, in fact, go back and use the quadratic form. So I hope you can see that there are a couple of ways to check whether or not a system is amenable to making the simplification. And once you make the simplification, you need to make sure that uh, it was justified. And the way to do it is to make sure that the final concentration at equilibrium is less than or equal to 5% of your starting reactant. So good luck on your study of chemistry, and I hope to see you in another video.